Yo, what's up, guys? Today we are reacting to Norway Geography Now. So, I don't know much about Norway. Um, I had a Norwegian friend when I was, I think, around 16, and he used to tell me about, you know, a few things. His name was Bjorn. Um, that's the only thing I know about Norway, actually. Um, I have watched, I think, two or three videos about Norway, but I think this is the complete guide. So if you're from Norway, let me know what city you are watching from in the comments down below. If you have ever been to Norway, let me know in the comments what your favorite thing is about the country. Um, I know it's a Scandinavian country. You know, I know they speak Norwegian. <laughs> I know the basics, but I think this is gonna be a complete guide. So we're gonna watch geography now. And hey, if you don't know anything about Norway either, then we're in this together. <laughs> We're going to learn about it now. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, if you guys want to suggest an exclusive video and support me on coffee, the link is in the description. We actually have a leaderboard. Tani, Urias, Kenneth, Dragonfly. Shout out to you guys. If you want to, you know, join the leaderboard, then hey, be my guest. Let's go. Hey everyone, so I'm excited for this one. We recently did a geography in Oslo, Norway, and I had the honor to meet many of you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, in your own country. It was amazing. Norway is a country everyone has kind of heard about, something about snow, ice, Vikings, skiing, I think trolls, but Norway is also I know, a right? of highly compounded history, tradition, postmodernism, and above all, landscape and people. And black metal. Yes, Keith is really excited for this episode. <laughs> black metal. Um what band is from Norway again? I know there's a band, a famous band from Norway. I can't just... Oh, oh he's gonna say it. I know he is. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. We've done Denmark, Finland, Iceland, and now the fourth Nordic sister, Norway. Now in the Nordic countries, Norway would kind of be like the one that everyone either tries to call their best friend or date. She smiles at the ground, pulls her hair behind her ear, and looks up with those sky blue doe eyes that sparkle and says, Welcome to Norway! What? <laughs> Norway plays a huge role in what it means to be Northern European. And when you look at it on the map, you'll see that it's fascinating how well they've developed a civil infrastructure from a rugged half-frozen peninsula. Oh, wow. <laughs> there's a town called Hell. First of all, the country, which kind of looks- Now that's ironic. There's a, a town called Hell and it's full of ice. So is that when Hell freezes over? <laughs> okay. Um, that is a beautiful picture. Nice infrastructure. Frozen peninsula. Oh, and <laughs> there's a town called. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hell. First of all, I guess hell froze over then. The country, which kind of looks like the shape of a spoon, is located in northern Europe in the region known as Scandinavia, just above the North Sea, bordering mostly Sweden to the east, Finland in the far north, and even a small sliver of Russia at the very end. This effectively means that Norway goes even further east than Finland and gets the entire Arctic coast from their neighbors, sharing the Barents Sea with Russia. Apart from that, Norway has some overseas territories as well, two of which are in the Arctic Circle, the Svalbard Archipelago with only about 3,000 people, mostly in the largest town Longyearbyen, and the uninhabited Jan Mayen Island, which was okay. Now that's the first thing I did not know. Norway actually borders Russia. It was actually kind of traded with the UK for these islands in Canada in like 1930 when Canada was still British. Weird trade off, but okay. After that, they have two dependent territories: the Antarctic areas of Peter the First Island and Bouvet Island, way down south. Neither wow. of which are permanently inhabited, and they also claim a portion of Antarctica known as Queen Maud Land. Going back to the mainland, though, the country is currently, as of 2019, divided into 17 counties or Fulker, plus the unincorporated area of Svalbard, which, by the way, holds the northernmost permanently inhabited in the world with a population around 40 in the winter and 120 in the summer the thing is in 2020 the country will merge some of these counties into 11 regions already north and south Trondelag have merged and the final result in 2020 will look like this the country's largest city and capital is Oslo located in the southeast which also holds the largest airport Oslo Lufthansa International wow, as well as Oslo shipping port the busiest shipping port in the country a that you know airports um are very important uh, i saw like uh very important for the image of a country right like singapore i think has the most beautiful um airport which is the 
kind of like the gate to your country right and that looked like a beautiful airport um so i guess when i would because okay let me explain this a little bit better i've traveled to many countries i haven't been to norway yet and the airport is the first sensation like like for example there was this country where i went i'm not going to say which country it was and as soon as we landed i heard a person next to me who was a native from that country he said welcome to hell <laughs> especially because it was so hot it was so hot and i was like oh what am i getting myself into here it was it was fun you know one of my favorite countries actually um, because of the stories that i lived there you know and it was actually during the civil war crazy times you know crazy times actually Skip to the west, you find the second largest city, Bergen, with of course the second largest airport, Bergen International. It is said that almost around 80% of the country lives within 10 kilometers of the ocean, and despite the rugged mountainous terrain, the nation has an extensive network of roads, bridges, and trains that cross virtually every region of the nation, including the Laerdal Tunnel, the world's longest road tunnel that stretches 24 kilometers long, cutting through a mountain, and also the famous Atlantic Road that hops from island to island in the Mura Romsdal County. Now what's really fascinating is that Norway we kind of went from this to this and for a nation that has never surpassed wow. five and a half million in population it's pretty impressive how did this happen though well as the legend goes in the 60s denmark was like hey norway you are just the best i love you man and you know just to prove it i'm gonna give you all this ocean water stuff wow really <laughs> yeah, 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 just take it thanks whoa there's like a ton of oil here thanks denmark Actually, oh my goodness convention like 10 years so Wow, they didn't know there was a bunch of oil, so Norway actually got a, a very high ROI, right? Return on investment. Well, although they didn't invest anything, it was just gifted to them. Whoa, there's like a ton of oil here. Thanks, Denmark. Actually, it was the Geneva Convention like 10 years prior to that, but that story is kind of boring. Now, as you can clearly tell, Norway has lots of access to the ocean. Due to all the serrated inlets and fjords, plus islands, they have the seventh largest coastline in the world. This also means that roads nice. and bridges can only take you so far. And in order to get around the Norway's west coast, you'll see a lot, and I mean a lot of ferries and ships. And what's cool is that- I like guess it's faster neighbors, though, Norway right? a free roaming law in which you can pretty much camp out anywhere in nature as long as it is not on private property. We all know some towns in Norway are situated in the most picturesque locations. Wow. Some like this town have no direct sunlight for six months because of the mountains, so they built giant mirrors to illuminate them. Fun fact, Longyearbyen is known for being that is the smart. brightest and darkest place on Earth. Because of its location on the Arctic Circle, it gets 110 continuous days of no sunshine and 95 days of no night. Also, they have an emergency seed bank with over a million yeah, I've seen specimens this. built into the side of a mountain in case of the apocalypse and all plant life dies out on Earth. Also, technically... The north of Sweden Sweden also has that, right? Um, it, I mean, probably like, like they call it the midnight sun, right? Probably near to each other, I guess. I don't know. It's illegal to die in Svalbard because of the. Wait, what? Let me go back. Apocalypse and all plant life dies out on Earth. Also, technically, it's illegal to die in Svalbard because of the permafrost. Bodies do not decompose, so you must either ship out your body or cremate it. Not sure how to segue out of that, but let's talk about cool places. Now, <laughs> I mean, okay, so you're you're definitely not going to ship yourself, right? How can you ship your own body? What is the law? I mean, how does that work, right? Your family should be contacted. But what if it's a, you know, a drifter, someone like, is the government going to, you know, ship your body out? That is so weird. And it, and oh, I guess it's too cold, you know, for your body to decompose. So yeah, it makes sense. Now I asked some of you guys in Norwegian Geography what some of the top places to visit in Norway are, and here are some of the suggestions you gave. Nordkap, the Viking Ship Museum, Nidaros Cathedral, the Dock of Bergen, the King's Castle, Alta's Igloo Hotel, Frogger oh, I've Park, seen that. and Vigeland Sculpture Park. Try to find the one with the dude fighting the babies. This <laughs> fortress, this Iron Age farm, the world's largest moose sculpture, wow. this whaling museum, the Roald Amundsen and Edward Munch monuments and grave, the Kontiki Museum, the Polaria Aquarium, the Ega viking style brewery the three swords monument so many traditional stave churches but this one is probably the most famous one wow. there's like a billion rocks named after body parts of trolls there's that weird boulder jammed between two cliffs a mountain now, with a hole in it so wait, it looks wait a second what if that you know shifts just a little bit 
trolls. There's that. It looks like it would fall. Like that would. Oh, wow. Okay, but then. Guys, I'm, in, I'm intrigued with the landscape, you know. Weird boulder jammed between two cliffs, a mountain with a hole in it, so it looks like it got shot by a gun. Wow. So many ice caves, the world's strongest whirlpool, so many fjords like Geiranger Fjord, North Fjord, Hardanger Fjord, Troll Fjord, Harrison Fjord. <laughs> they were even supposed to give Harrison Fjord. Oh my goodness. Harrison Fjord. They were even supposed to give Finland the peak of Mount Halti for their 100th birthday, but then it was kind of like, Happy 100th birthday, Finland! Thanks, Norway. So I heard that you're thinking of finally giving me the peak to my tallest mountain, right? Oh, oh yeah, sure, why not? Awesome. Well, then, uh, let me have it. Oh, see, there's this thing in my constitution called Article 1, which states that the Kingdom of Norway is indivisible, so here's a taco. Yeah, Norwegians actually really love tacos, which makes the perfect really? opportunity wow. to transition. Me too. Now, if you know anything about Norway's land, you'll know this one word. Fjords. 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 Fjord. Fjord is even Norwegian. And it's interesting how it became that way. Basically, like many other areas in the north, the country is a post-glacial peninsula with over 50,000 islands that at one point was completely covered in ice. Over time, the ice melted, eroding the rock beneath, creating the incredibly indented coastline of steep, jagged cliffs and fjords. Of the coast, the largest and deepest fjord is Sonja Fjord, and it is the third largest in the world, extending over 200 kilometers inland. This means that much of the country is divided into regions of choppy fjord stuff to the west and the connected hilly and valley stuff to the south and southeast. Everything nice. pretty much falls either within the alpine boreal climate or further up north, arctic. Keep in mind that due to Svalbard and Jan Mayen, the Norwegian economic zone extends to the majority of the Norwegian Sea and much of the Barents, as well as the North Sea to the south. This is called the NCS or Norwegian Continental Shelf. Here the largest deposit of underwater oil is found that supplies Norway with much of its wealth. A skip to the east you find the largest Guys, I, I didn't know that, honestly, because um, when you think of oil, you think more kind of like a mid or Middle East, right? Um, or I don't know, but it, it's very interesting that, you know, Norway has this much amount of oil and that's where their wealth comes from. Um, you know, I don't know if Bush, <laughs> George Bush knew about that, but if he did, then Hey, Norway would have to protect their borders. I'm just kidding. Largest lake, Lake Musa, which is just parallel to the longest river in the country, the Glomma, which drains all the way into the North Sea in the south and has a drainage basin that covers about 13% of the country's land. A little skip to the west, in the center, you find the longest and most dominant mountain chain, the Scandinavian Mountains, where you can find the tallest peak, Galdhöpigen, which is also the tallest in all of the world. If we are discussing the overseas territories, then Svalbard is pretty much an Arctic archipelago of glaciers, this one being the largest in all of Europe, and the rest are mostly just Van Mayen Island is the only place with an active volcano in Norway. The Berenberg Peak last erupted in 1980. Otherwise, if wow. we skip all the way south to the Antarctic, Bouvet and Peter I Islands are dormant volcanic islands, Bouvet considered the most remote island in the world, and both of which are nearly completely covered in ice and only inhabited by seals and birds. Now, keep in mind about the oil thing, though. Although they export lots of it, gas is actually still super expensive. According to GlobalPetrolPrices.com, as of 2019, it is just over 17.2 krone per liter, making it one of the most expensive places to get gas in the world wow uh, if i'm not mistaken correct me if i'm wrong i might be wrong um but i heard there was a a gas canal that was being built um to provide gas to europe because of the the russia um ukraine war is, is that is that the case I don't want to talk about it. This is partially because in 1990, they initiated the Government Pension Fund Global. This is a national wealth fund run by the government to subsidize pensions when oil dependence runs dry. Now, Norway has lots of natural resources and clever ways of managing them, making them somewhat of a paragon for development few other nations can compare with. Challenge accepted. But for what it's worth, they have a unique system locked and loaded. And now it is time for my triple shot of espresso break. Usually this is the part where Noah comes in, but Noah is out of town. So let's give this to Keith. Now, everyone knows that is Norway Norwegian? is a prosperous nation, but just how prosperous is it? Let's just put it this way. They export more than they import and not just petroleum products. Fish alone makes up about 10% of their exports and they are the highest exporter of salmon out of any other country in the world. I just... Wait, I've heard of the Arctic salmon, so it comes from Norway, right? I guess. 
love Voss water. It's expensive Voss. and it's Norwegian, so you know it probably came from like a mystical glacier or something. Yeah, no, that's basically just our tap water. I wash my dishes with that stuff every day. But it's expensive and Norwegian. And you fell for it. Ha! Y'all just got tricked. Other Wait a second, is that true? Is Voss water like super common tap water? Is that true? It, I feel like a, it's a scam now. That's how they portrayed it. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it, it's how they portrayed it. <laughs> Otherwise, the majority of the energy in Norway comes from hydroelectric power. Norway became one of the first countries to adopt a carbon tax back in 1991. Although cutting down trees is still done on a smaller scale, they were the first country to ban deforestation. They have Europe's largest herd of reindeer. They have lots of birds like puffins, whales, oh. and orcas love swimming off the coast. In the Arctic, you can find polar bears and walruses. And now, food. Norwegian food, food is known for being either really nice, warm, and cozy, or straight up disgusting. They love their fish. You have some in- Was that a goat head? That looks a lot like British food. You know, we have the bangers. Is that red cabbage? Is that pork scratching? Nice, warm, and cozy, or straight up- Yo, that's a goat's head. Last time I saw a goat's head being served um, was in Namibia, Africa, um, and it did not smell, it did not smell appetizing. I can, I can feel the smell. Oh, goodness. Oh, wow. Disgusting. They love their fish. You have some interesting fish dishes like lutefisk and rockfisk. Some other dishes include things like various types of porridge, pickled herring, kumla, reindeer made in various ways, reindeer, and brown sauce, cream cocker. Have you guys ever cheese, e eaten reindeer? Christmas dishes. I knew that was pork. Oh, that is delicious. That is delicious. The way you make this um, is you pour scorching boiling hot water on top of the pork skin and it crack it, it, you know it cracks up and becomes that delicious crackling ah dishes and the national dish fortical however if you ask a norwegian Fortica. they might tell you the new national dish of norway is tacos they tacos. might have some questionable you guys really love table your tacos for you to add like mayonnaise or cucumbers and i mean come on mexico even you break your own rules all the time <laughs> and mix things up in your own country so let the norwegians have their fun and speaking of norwegians I'm gonna be honest, I, I've never heard of Norwegian tacos. I mean, this is really new to me and really surprising. But hey, I'll take it. Have fun. Oh, and speaking of Norwegians having fun. Oh, and speaking of Norwegians having fun. Dun, dun. Demographs. Thank you, Keith. Norwegians have a saying, they are born with skis. The word even comes from the ancient Norse word skith, which means split wood. If there was any kind of apex cold winter type of people on earth, Norwegians would take the gold. And they literally do take the gold. Like they have more Winter Olympics gold medals than any other country. First. What? That is awesome. Cause Norway isn't like a huge country and well, you know, y y I mean, the population isn't that big so you you'd think um i don't know maybe russia would be the leader but nah it, it, it's not about quantity it's about quality and they have you know great athletes they literally do take the gold like they have more winter olympics gold medals than any other country 132 wow and it beats the us by a, a lot 32 wow First of all, the country has about 5.3 million people and as of 2018 has the highest human development index out of any country in the world. At about 84%, the country is made up primarily of people that identify as ethnically Norwegian, including about 60,000 indigenous Sami people. About 8.3% wow, of the population is other European descent, 60, mostly Western Europe, and the remaining population is made up of other people groups from outside of Europe, from various regions of Africa, Asia, mostly from countries like Pakistan, Somalia, Morocco, Iraq, and Kurdish people. They use the Norwegian wow. krone as their currency. They use the 
types C and F plug outlets and they drive on the right side of the road. Interesting to note that they are not part of the EU, but part of the European Economic Area and Free Trade Association. In fact, like Switzerland, right? Norway is a kingdom, currently under the headship of King Harold V. However, his role is mostly representative and ceremonial. His executive powers are limited and most government is ruled by the parliament. Essentially though, although some would argue Vikings kind of started in Denmark, it really kicked off in Norway. Nor Let me ask you one thing about the, the royal family, because I'm, I'm, I'm generally very curious. Um, does it have like drama like the the british royal family and the swedish royal family what is the drama like because <laughs> you know the the swedish and the british royal family have kind of like a celebrity status so Norwegian Vikings did kind of all the exploring and colonizing and raiding and killing, you know, Viking stuff. And no, they did not wear helmets with horns. Language-wise, Norway actually has two official languages, Norwegian and Sami, the language of the minority really? northern indigenous peoples that have lived in the frigid regions for millennia. The Norwegian language, however, is kind of confusing, though, because it kind of has two different writing systems that everybody must learn in school, Nunorsk and Bokmål. What exactly are they? You have to learn how to write it twice? Two writing? Goodness. Don't you get confused? Well, it kind of goes like this. Hey, we've been in a union with the Danish for centuries and now they are gone. We can speak our own language freely. Woohoo! But we've been writing our language in the Danish style for so long. I mean, what do we do? Do we change it? Hi, I'm Evo Olsen, and I say yes. I'm going to listen to all the dialects of Norwegian and come up with a weird fusion thing that can work for everyone. I'll call it Nunorsk. We can teach it in schools and everyone can be free of Danish influence. Uh... And and today, the Danish style football is still used by about 85% of the population. Weird side note, the word ha can mean almost anything in Norway. For example, ha, 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 ha. Speaking of which, like me. What? Ha? <laughs> Today, the Danish style bookmark ha. is still used by about 85% of the population. Weird side note, the word ha can mean almost anything in Norway. For example, ha, ha. I swear you better not take the kids this time. Ha. 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 <laughs> Goodness. I mean, I'm not going to read all of it because, you know, time is, is, is money, but I get the picture. Ha. Speaking of which, like many of their other neighbors, Norwegians have 13 years of school, graduating at age 19. And when nice. Norwegians are just about ready to take their final exams, they go on a three-week party called Rus. And just Rus. Norway has lots of different dialects. Guys, let me know a, a little bit about Rus. And if you have a good video about Rus, let me know. Also, if you have a good video about the royal family, let me know in the comments. Or send me a coffee. Alex, here are some of you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, explaining. For standard Norsk, I would say, how do uh, many also in the road, I say, Hi, my name is Talina. In standard Norwegian, you might say Vores, but in Egos, you say Okas. Okas. In the west, you could say Yisra Leiro. And in the north, maybe Kurate. In Oslo, you Kurate. say something along the lines of the Arikilit, Shunru, Trendelag County, Dek Latsha. That is hard to s pronounce. Of the Arikilit. The Arikilit. Shunru. Shunru. Trendelag County, Dek Latsjö. Dek Latsjö. So in standard Norwegian, you would say Söppel. Söppel. And we say Boss. Thank you. Boss. Otherwise, there are so many other things you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, wanted us to talk about in terms of your culture. And here is Random Hannah with culture stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Norway is a land loaded with tradition and folklore. Many of you have already heard of things like trolls and elves, but yep. there's also scary beings like the Holdra, not Mara, and the Nukin. Pretty much all Nor Do you guys have movies based on, on these um, beings or, or monsters or whatever you call them? Norwegians are outdoorsy people. Hiking and cross-country skiing are national pastimes, hands down. Almost every... Wait, skiing is just like a pastime? It's not like an extreme sport? people hiking and cross-country skiing are national pastimes hands down almost everyone owns some kind of mari sweater made of wool with traditional patterns knitted onto the upper parts usually in the national colors of red white and blue many norwegians own small cabins in the woods and they actually like to brag about how bad their cabins can be <laughs> as in how technologically what? disconnected they are with the okay. least amenities no wi-fi no electricity no plumbing you're hardcore speaking of wait so that's a flex that's a flex really you're like 
Oh, my cabin has no Wi-Fi. <laughs> Amateur. Wi-Fi. My cabin has no... Door. I don't know. <laughs> that, that sounds so, you know... I don't know. <laughs> With the least amenities. No Wi-Fi, no electricity, no plumbing. You're hardcore. Speaking of bragging, okay. in Norway, it's considered super cool to come back from vacation and show off your tan. Because it's kind of hard to get a tan in Norway. The Nobel Peace Prize is also awarded in Oslo every year. By the way, is there... Cause the, the, the ladies attire right here, it feels like it's a little bit... Um, too cold to wear a bikini right but perhaps there are moments like what is your summer like is it hot maybe because you know it's kind of hard to get a tan in norway the Nobel peace prize is also awarded in oslo every year in norway everyone's income and wealth is on public record mostly but for what it's worth the nation what? does this to help prevent tax evasion and finally we cannot skip the boonads these are traditional costumes of norway that come in so many different varieties based on the region and town you are from they are mostly worn for special occasions especially for may 17th the country's national day where they march to the castle in oslo yeah 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 all right get out of here i want to talk about Music. Traditionally, Norwegians have oh, their own traditional folk music and dance is called Bugdi Dance. Traditional Bugdi Dance. Guys, I want to react to Bugdi Dance. Guys, let me know. Let me know in the comments right now or on coffee if there's a video of Bugdi Dance. I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna research. And dance is called Bugdi Dance. Boogie dance. I'm really. I'm gonna write this down before I forget. Boogie the dance. Um, let me just write this down because I I actually want to watch this. How do you spell that? Boogie the dance. Boogie the dance. I want to see what this is all about. Hey, I couldn't find it. Did I write it right? Boogie the dance. Huh, I did write it correctly, but I couldn't find... Okay, I'll, I'll do that afterwards. <laughs> I'm just... Uh, yeah, forgive me for being curious. Traditional instruments include things like dulcimers, goat horn, willow flute. The traditional folk music eventually found a way to fuse with one of the most popular genres of Norway today, metal, or specifically Norwegian folk metal bands. Not only wow. that, but black metal was started supposedly in Norway, and it has since been a domineering genre many people have been playing for decades. That's it for me. <laughs> Thank you again, Keith. Anyway, we gotta move on. History. In the quickest way I can put it, Viking Age. This dude unites Norway into one kingdom. Vikings invade and take over a ton of other places like England. Christianity. Old Kingdom. Black Plague. Union of Kalmar. Denmark takes over. Lutheranism. Sweden takes over. Constitution established. First wave of immigrants to America. They finally leave Sweden. World War One. Neutral. Women's suffrage. World War Two. Neutral again, but Germany doesn't care. Joins NATO and European Free Trade Association. Oil boom. They vote and reject EU membership. Host the Winter Olympics and Lillehammer, largest underwater gas pipeline in the world open, Oslo grows and more immigrants come in, and here we are today. I asked you Norwegian geography peeps for some notable people from Norway or of there we Norwegian go. descent, and here are some of the ones you suggested we put in this video. Eric the Red, so many past Vikings and Kings, blah blah blah. Edward Gregg, Edward Munch, these riders, these cross-country skiers, Roald Amundsen, Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen, chess master. Chess master, amazing, amazing. Uh, I've seen him play. I, I, I love chess. Max Magnus, Tor Heyerdahl, Fritjof Nansen, so many musicians like... Let me see if I... Oh, I know Alexander Rybak. Rybak. I know Ilvis also. I've, I've, I think I've reacted. Aha, of course. Aha. Wow, they're Norwegian. I didn't know. I think they had a new song out. Ashford S. I think I've seen her as well. I should check out Kano... Sigrid and Marcus and Martinez. Like these people, as well as actors like these people. Oh, Christopher Hivu. Okay, I know him from Game of Thrones, obviously. People, and of course, the royal family. Have I, I, I need to learn more about the royal family. I, I want to see it. Seriously, though, did you guys watch the movie Contiki? It's pretty good. I mean, his no. migration theory was still kind of mostly wrong, but hey, you did a cool thing, man. And that's the thing about Norwegians. They're so globally intrepid. They reach out to the far corners. And with that, they've also made a lot of friends. Which brings us to...
Now, Norwegians are known for being very level-headed and nice, but they do know who they support and stand by no matter what. First of all, Switzerland is kind of like their weird alternate parallel universe twin that shares a lot in common with them. They both are not part of the EU. They both are very financially stable, yet expensive to live in. They both have mountains and snow, and they both have similar values in general affairs. They get along pretty well and enjoy sharing the ski stories. The UK is a very close friend, especially wow. Scotland, due to their shared Viking history. They even give them a Christmas tree every year to say thanks for helping in World War Two, when their king and government were taken in from exile as the Germans tried to invade. Nepal has close ties as another mountain nation Nepal. that take much interest and send much aid to their programs. High profile politicians have visited in the past, like their Minister of Environmental Development, Eric Solheim, and the Prime Minister of Nepal visited Norway as well. For the USA, they have a very close connection, not only in diplomacy, government, and business, but specifically to the diaspora living in the USA, and specifically the state of Minnesota. Nearly a million Norwegian Americans live in this one state alone. The USA holds more. Wait, is that why Miss Minnesota has like a kind of like a European accent? Minnesota, something like that. Um, I, I think I, I think Fargo was based in Minnesota, if I'm not mistaken. Have you watched Fargo? It's a great movie, great series. Watch it more people of Norwegian heritage than any other country outside of Norway, with almost as many as there are in Norway. They even have a game show called Alt for Norge, in which Norwegian Americans see the homeland of their ancestors. They cry and act way too dramatic, which is entertaining. The winner gets to meet their Norwegian relatives, and the losers get a book telling them information, but they don't get to meet their relatives, which is kind of messed up, but it's a game show. <laughs> okay. Anyway, when it comes... I should react to that, right? <laughs> Guys... I don't know, I feel so good today. Uh, and, you know, th this video is very informative. comes to their best friends, pretty much what I've heard is a mix between all the Nordics, but specifically Iceland, Denmark, and Sweden. Iceland is like their party friend they love to go on adventures with. And they're also kind of like the preserved Norse nation that their ancestors colonized, which holds a dear spot in their hearts. Today, they have a defense agreement that allows the Norwegian Air Force to survey and patrol the Icelandic airspace as well. Denmark and Norway, however, are always kind of fighting for Norway's affection. Both these nations in the past have fought each other and ruled over Norway under separate kingdoms. All three countries were at one point part of the Kalmar Union. They can oh, relatively yeah, yeah. understand each other when oh. they talk. Swedish is closer to Norwegian though. They are all part of NATO, the Council of Europe, and many people from each of these nations end up marrying and having families together. In conclusion, Norway's prosperity... See, that's the thing. Um, the fact that they're part of NATO and they're bordering Russia, isn't that dangerous at some point? Wait. I don't know doesn't stop with their will for gritty cold adventure. They've scaled the South Pole, the icebergs, the glaciers, and the tundras. It's almost as if the ice keeps them warm. Stay tuned. Oman is coming up next. Okay, wow. That was very insightful, very educational, very entertaining. And I got to learn a little bit more about, um, you know, um, Norway and the culture and everything that was nice that was nice um anyways if you guys want me to react to anything that was you know in this video um you know the royal family or that tv show the game show or what's the name of this big big dead dance dance big dead dance Bagdadans, which is the regional traditional dance of Norway. I I found it now. I'll, I'll react to that as well. Anything you guys want me to know about your country, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, guys, like and subscribe. You can leave a comment or you can send me it on coffee. It's up to you. Thank you so much. Take care for now. Bye-bye, see you soon, and let me know in the comments what your favorite thing is about Norway. Take care.